All right. Welcome, everybody. Mike, Christy, are you with me? Yep. Here with you all. All right. Well, it seems like we got a whole bunch of people here excited to learn more about TEFL, TEFL certification. Uh, folks, we'll get going here in just a moment. We got a lot of folks still sort of getting settled. Uh, a lot of you have been testing out that chat function. Why don't you type in where you're tuning in from and let's see if uh, Mike or Christy will give you a shout out and then we'll get going here. Southern California. Hey there. <laughs> I'm from San Diego. I see Arizona. I am actually currently in Arizona. <laughs> Coming fast and furious yeah. from you here. I'm like, I know it's so it's fast. <laughs> Dominican oh, Republic, yeah. New Zealand. <laughs> good morning or good night or something. Good morning tomorrow. <laughs> Whatever time of day it is. Ecuador, amazing. Cameroon, Chattanooga. Underrated. Oh, yeah, town. Everyone from San Diego here. How cool. <laughs> um, Philadelphia. Jamaica. That's Rock and roll. We got a little everything. Edmonton. Sorry about the Stanley Cup there. <laughs> Game seven is an exciting season. Philippines. Love the Philippines. Another Californian, another person from Vegas. Awesome. Yeah, people came, came with it. Right, New York. Wow. Wow. Well, we got about 100 people in. in. I think we got more coming in. Obviously, you know, it's always fascinating to see people tuning in from all over the world here. Uh, but let's get started. Um, we'll get going here with... Excuse me, a couple intros, and then we'll uh, get right into the meat of the uh, broadcast, which is TEFL certification and teaching English abroad. Uh, we got three of us here on the broadcast team tonight. I think between the three of us, we have about 50 years of experience in the world of TEFL. So uh, super excited to get going. My name is John. Uh, I'm a co-founder here at International TEFL Academy. Uh, so I've been on the team since the beginning. I'm originally from Southern California, but I was lucky. I got to, uh, my parents were lifelong expats, so I got to grow up in Cairo, Egypt and live abroad and travel abroad and then later on study abroad and work abroad uh, sort of from the get-go. I got into travel writing during my college days at Harvard and from there went into journalism and eventually transferred into international education and have been working in the field of TEFL for about 16 years. So super happy to be here with everybody and also to introduce my old pal and colleague, Mike Koenig. Hey, everybody. Uh, nice to meet you, so to speak. Glad you're here tonight. Uh, again, uh, my name is Mike Koenig. I'm an advisor here at ITA. I've been here for a decade now, taught English in Madrid, Spain. Uh, a few years before that, and uh, ended up being a Chicago school teacher. After coming back from that, I wasn't an educator before. I uh, had so many incredible experiences. I just got, I just had a week long visit from my friends who come annually, who I taught English with in Spain all those years ago. So uh, I'm really glad to be here tonight to be able to share some of this with you and explain to you some of these options that you have. Uh, it changed my whole life. It does for a lot of people, and. We hope you learn a lot and are excited to keep learning more. Uh, now, one of my newer colleagues here uh, who has a lot more travel experience than I do uh, and a lot of insight, Christy Skinner. Hey, guys. How's it going? Um, I'm Christy. I, like he said, I am newer as an advisor, but I actually got my TEFL certificate here from International TEFL Academy 10 years ago this year. Um, so I've been using my certification to teach all over the world. It's a fun adventure. Um, I was able, I actually um, had no teaching experience before. Um, so if you have no teaching experience, don't stress. That's what we're here for. Um, but I was able to teach in Spain. I taught in Japan. I taught in Brazil. 
Um, and I've also taught a lot online on multiple different types of platforms. So it really is a great way to be able to travel and explore and be able to help people along the way. All right. So before we get going here, I just want to make a quick uh, clarification. Uh, some of you have been using the chat here so far. Uh, going forward, we got Mike on the Q&A. So he's here to answer your questions. Um, you should see a Q&A button on your Zoom tool or your Zoom panel. Uh, going forward, use that Q&A button to ask questions. Um, Mike will be using the general chat to post links for everybody. So uh, use that Q&A button. Um, now, we, as I said, we got a hundred and some odd people in here and more are still coming in. So if he doesn't get to everybody's question, uh, please get in touch. If you've been assigned an advisor, get in touch with your advisor, give them a call, shoot them a text, make a set up a meeting on their calendar. They're happy to go over all of your questions, discuss your options. They've all taught English abroad before themselves. So they know the ins and outs of all the job markets and so forth. So get in touch with them. They're there to help. They'll go over your questions in far more detail than we can here. Um, in the meantime, fire away and Mike will do his best to keep up. All right, guys. So you're probably wondering what we're going to talk about. So quick little breakdown um, to get started. We're going to talk about who we are here at International TEFL Academy. Uh, then we're going to dive into what is TEFL. I know I didn't even know what that meant when I got started. So zero judgment zone. Um, we're going to go into what to look for as you're shopping around for your TEFL class provider. And we're going to talk about different red flags that you want to definitely avoid. Um, we'll go into more details in a little bit. Uh, we're going to talk about the different types of TEFL classes that you can get yourself enrolled in to get that proper certification. And we're going to talk about all the different types of tips you need, and we'll do some Q&A at the end. Right. So here at International TEFL Academy, and TEFL stands for Teaching English as a Foreign Language, uh, we specialize in providing training, TEFL certification, and job search guidance for folks who want to teach English abroad. Um, we are about to celebrate our 14th anniversary. We're super proud that over the years, we've become recognized as a clear leader in the field of TEFL and TEFL certification. Uh, we have won numerous awards. Just in the last few weeks, we were named. Uh, we won the Innovation in TEFL Award from the Go Abroad uh, Travel Awards for Meaningful Travel. We won the uh, People's Choice Award as Top International Educational Organization from Go Abroad. Uh, and we've won all sorts of other you know, awards and accolades. So we're really proud to be recognized as a leader. Uh, we also have thousands of reviews all over the internet. So we invite you to check them out, get the perspective from our students and alumni. And as I mentioned before, get in touch at any time with any thoughts or questions about teaching English overseas and TEFL certification. All right, guys. So let's learn a little bit more about us here at ITA. Um, we were founded here in 2010. So like John said, been around here for 14 years. Um, we have helped people get certified at all different age ranges, anywhere from 17 to 85. So it's not too early. It's not too late. You can always get started. Um, we have had over 3,000 students just within the last year. Um, and since we started, we've helped certify over 48,000 different students around the world. Um, some people have education experience. A lot of people don't. Um, depending on where you want to teach, you might need a degree, but there's still 30 plus different countries you don't need a degree. They just really are looking for that TEFL certification. So we really do help people with a lot of different backgrounds, different ages, whatever stage you're at in life, there's going to be opportunities for you. And we're here to help make sure that you can make those goals happen. Yeah, and we're really proud of our team. Uh, and I think one thing that stands out about our team is everybody's lived abroad, travel abroad. All of our advisors have taught English abroad. So they've been in your shoes. They understand the challenges, not only when it comes to 
figuring out what your TEFL course options are or how things work in different job markets. But if you're concerned about, hey, if I move to Korea, how am I going to make friends? How am I going to get around? What if I don't speak the local language? What am I going to do about getting a new phone or finding a place to live or opening a bank account? All those sorts of ins and outs. Our team have all dealt with those personally, and they've helped hundreds, if not thousands of people uh, go abroad and do this. So whatever questions and concerns you might have, not only about TEFL and job markets and getting a job, but the practicalities of going overseas, our team is here to help and answer your questions. All right, guys. So who here has been researching, teaching English abroad, teaching online, and keep seeing TEFL? Um, I know for me, I was mispronouncing it to my advisor when I first started talking with her. So um, what is it? Uh, TEFL, it stands for Teaching English as a Foreign Language. So a TEFL certification is what you're going to see is required by employers around the world, abroad, online, whichever way you want to do it. Um, like I said earlier, you don't need to have a degree. You don't need to have prior experience. TEFL certification really is what the employers are looking for when you're looking for broad, uh, jobs abroad. So um, make sure that you are looking into those certification options and to be able to get hired. And we're going to go into that here on the next slide. Yeah. And you're going to see some other acronyms out there. TESOL, which basically means teaching, teaching English to speakers of other languages. That acronym actually is typically used uh, when referring to uh, training or a degree for teaching English in an English speaking country. So, for example, if you wanted to teach English in a public school in the United States, very often you might did a, get a degree or a certification in TESOL, but really it just refers to the same thing. Uh, ESL is another acronym that a lot of us are familiar with, especially here in the United States, teaching English second language. Uh, EFL, another variation. Uh, you may see something called a CELTA mentioned here and there. CELTA is a well-known TEFL certification based out of the uh, UK. Um, sometimes the term is used interchangeably. So if you see a job listing and it says CELTA required or something like that, basically it means a TEFL certification of a certain degree of quality, which all of our courses meet or exceed. All right. So wondering what you can do with the TEFL certification, honestly, a lot. Um, you can get paid to teach English abroad. We have alumni teaching in over 80 different countries, um, like we said, with or without a degree, with or without experience. Um, you can earn money teaching English online, full-time, part-time, from home, while traveling. You can do private tutoring. It's a great option to do as a side gig. Um, you can do it in person, full-time, part-time, kind of however you want. Um, you can teach English from home. We have a lot of people who are doing that to help their neighbors um, who are moving from other countries who want to get jobs. Um, we also have people doing it to volunteer as they're looking for opportunities abroad just to help. Uh, we have people getting certified with us who are then going on to work with the Peace Corps um, and working with other volunteer organizations. Um, Honestly, over a billion people are learning English right now. Um, there are 5 million ESL students in the American public schools. Um, and internationally, there's so many opportunities. Um, like I said, I got my certification going on 10 years now. I honestly have taught anywhere from three years old to 95 years old. Um, I've taught public schools, private schools, private tutoring. I've taught online. Um, I even actually worked for the first virtual reality English teaching program. So there's really so many opportunities and you can really make it happen however you want. So if you're curious more about what your potential opportunities are, really don't hesitate to reach out to our advisors because we get excited to talk about those options. All right. 
Uh, before we go any further, we want to take a pulse of the virtual room. Uh, Mike, let's see if that poll that I put together today is actually working. We want to know what is important to you in looking for a TEFL course or a TEFL training school. Um, high quality instruction with international accreditation. Are you looking for the cheapest option? Uh, are you really interested in a course that provides comprehensive job search guidance? Uh, are you not sh really not sure? You're just trying to, you know, you're just at the beginning learning about, you know, how things work and so forth. Um, not seeing a lot of TEFL certified folks in here. Uh, Christy, when you sort of got interested in this, uh, you know, what were you looking for in a TEFL course and why did you end up going with ITA? Really good question. Um, the major things that I really was looking for was who was teaching the course. Um, I really wanted to make sure I was getting a high quality education. Um, I also wanted to make sure that I was going to have support after the fact. Um, the reason I'm working here 10 years later is because every year I went to another place, every year I reached out for support and I did get that here. Um, so it really is nice knowing that we're not just going to give you like another version of Craigslist type of thing, <laughs> like a job board. Um, so those were some major factors I was looking for. Excellent. I, you know, I think we hear those same things from our students every day. Uh, Mike, you want to tally up the results here and let us know what people are thinking? Yep. We're going to wrap this up right now. Let me end the poll. And I'm going to share the results with you all right now. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's a nice split here. Uh, and really good um, sign uh, that we have a good, smart group that's doing some serious research. About 50... Uh, about 61% of the people here are looking for uh, high quality of instruction and accreditation, high level of accreditation. Um, about 60% of the people are looking for comprehensive uh, job guidance, uh, which are the two things we're sort of famous for, which you learn more about. So uh, <laughs> good night to be here for the vast majority of y'all. All right. Uh, always interesting to see you know, what people are thinking and what stage they're at in their journey and what they're looking for and so forth. All right. So uh, what to look for in a TEFL class provider? Um, you know, it's okay to note that it's important to note that not all TEFL courses out there are the same. And, you know, sometimes it can get confusing when you're looking on Google or you're looking on some site like GoBroad.com that lists, you know, dozens of different TEFL classes and programs and TEFL providers and schools and, you know, job placement, this and that and so forth. Um, there are many courses offered by different TEFL schools. A lot of them have similar sounding names, which makes it even more confusing. Uh, but as you weigh your options, we're going to go over some key, some key points here for you to look for when choosing the right TEFL score, uh, choosing the right TEFL course. Uh, remember, you are getting trained to be a professional teacher and your students are typically paying for your services. So getting the right skills is key for your success uh, and providing your students with a quality educational experience. Uh, also, it's key to note that employers are really looking for folks who have proper training and a proper TEFL certification. So we recommend you do your due diligence, put a premium on getting the best training possible rather than just going and signing up for the cheapest option that you know comes your way. Uh, I think that's a theme we'll be touching on as we uh, go through the broadcast here. Yeah, so um, some of those things, like I was saying, some of the things I was sharing while I started doing my shopping, um, once I really started doing the research and diving in into what are the things I'm supposed to be looking for, um, the first thing you're going to see is accreditation and international standards. Like John said, not all TEFL certificates are recognized equally. Employers know the differences. Even your students know the differences. Um, so you do want to make sure you're getting a properly qualified TEFL certification. 
um, that gets you that professional level TEFL course. So what you're going to be looking at, like we have here, 100 hours of academic coursework, um, which is equal to a four-week full-time in-person course or an equivalent online course. Um, you're also going to be seeing that those TEFL courses with accreditation are going to have practicum. Uh, practicum is live practice teaching with actual ESL students. Your employers and your students want to know you have experience. So that's something you're going to see through these accreditation standards. Um, you're going to want to make sure who your professor is. Courses that are taught by a university level instructor, uh, you want to know that they have a master's or PhD in a TEFL related field um, because you want to know you're being taught by people who know what they're talking about. So you really are prepared to help your students properly. Um, and you want to make sure it's accredited by a recognized body in the TEFL field. Um, there's a lot of different ways to go about it, but you really do want to make sure you're getting a proper certification. You get what you pay for. So you do want to make sure you're actually paying for a course that's going to actually get you a job. That's right. And, uh, you know, you don't need to get bogged down with the alphabet soup of acronyms and, you know, different fancy uh, names of organizations that are recognized accrediting bodies. Uh, we don't have time to go into depth that, you know, for that right now. Uh, here are some of the major organizations. Uh, a number of these are based in the UK, and this goes back to the fact that the British have been teaching English in different countries around the world literally since uh, the days of the of the British Empire. Um, we have some great resources on our website. I think we have a whole website page all about accreditation. Perhaps Mike can pop that into the chat, and there you can really sink your teeth into you know getting into the specifics. So earlier I mentioned that practicum, that practice teaching, you really want to make sure that you get that during your TEFL certificate. I'm one of those people who loves being hands-on. I want to make sure that when I'm starting to teach, I know what I'm actually doing. So this practicum honestly was one of my favorite parts of the course. Um, it helps you gain confidence. You get actual experience working with non-native English speakers. It's not one of those awkward things where you're like, in an interview and they're like, what would you do in this situation? And you're like, well, that one time I did that with another teacher, like you actually can say you've done it. <laughs> um, em employers, schools, international programs, they really, really do want to see that you have experience. And so if you don't have any experience, that practicum is where you get that. Um, my employer in Japan, they honestly were like, if you, I went somewhere to teach before that, and they told me in my interview, you honestly wouldn't have gotten this job if you didn't have experience before. So you really do want to make sure you're checking that off. Um, you're going to see a lot when you're looking into reviews on stuff that in-person practicum is preferred. Um, honestly, over the years, a lot of people are switching over to more online learning just because it's more doable. Um, it's easier financially and a lot of different ways people are preferring it. So you are kind of seeing that shift um, since COVID. So even if you do see people prefer those in-person practicum hours, know that online practice teaching really is starting to be up and coming and being accepted as well. All right. So we'll touch more on this in a little more detail in a couple of minutes. But, you know, typically when you're looking at what are you going to be learning in a standard TEFL course, it's going to be, you know, fundamental teaching skills, teaching methodologies for teaching basic skills uh, like reading and writing, and grammar, classroom management. How do you run a classroom? Cultural sensitivity. How do you deal with working with people from different backgrounds and cultures? Uh, lesson planning, curriculum development, assessment. How do you, you know, measure the uh, progress of your students? And then, of course, learning how to communicate with non-English speaking students. One thing a lot of people wonder is, hey, I don't speak uh Japanese, can I go to Japan and actually teach English? And the answer is yes. And one of the skills that you learn in your TEFL class is how to communicate and how to teach with students um, that you don't speak their language. And in fact, typically when you're in a classroom overseas teaching English, even if you do speak the local language, you don't want to be using it with your students in the class because you want to be immersing them in an English only environment that really pushes them to use and practice 
their English uh, in your classroom. So here at ITA, our primary goal is to help you realize your goals. Uh, we, we really want to make sure that you're investing your time and money in a course that is going to make sure you know what your options are after um, and what to expect in that job search. So one of the really nice things, honestly, one of the major reasons I decided to go here um, was because every person who works here has been in your shoes. We've all not known what we were doing, eventually learned, and we've taught abroad, we've taught online, we've lived abroad, we know what it looks like, we know what it feels like, and we're really here to help you make it happen for yourself. So really do talk with your advisors, highly recommend it, um, and make sure that as you're searching, you're looking for TEFL schools that do provide pre-enrollment guidance. What you get from out like at the beginning, you're going to experience even more of that once you do get yourself invested and enrolled. So just make sure that you are talking to the people before you actually enroll. Um, your advisors here, we're going to understand what goes into taking that dive, uh, what it's like moving overseas, what it's like building that new life and meeting new people and finding those jobs because every country does look different, but we really do have that experience to help you make it happen. Um, I talked to my advisor multiple times, back and forth, text, email, calls. So please do not hesitate to reach out to us. We That's why we're here. We love talking about teaching abroad. Um, so really reach out. We have a great time helping you make it happen. Yeah, and there's our, our old colleague, Doug, jumping off the uh, Great Wall of China. <laughs> <laughs> uh, lifetime job search guidance, uh, job search assistance, whatever you want to call it. Um, taking a TEFL class and gaining, you know, the skills to run a classroom is really only part of the process. Um, as we discussed, there are, you know, literally hundreds of millions, more than a billion people learning English. So the demand are there, the jobs are there, but navigating international job markets and figuring out how do I interview for jobs in Japan, which is going to be a totally different process than getting a job in, say, Peru or Costa Rica. Uh, you know, how do visas work? What documents do you need to get processed? Um, and so forth. So we have a whole team of people, we'll talk about that in a moment, who help our students and graduates uh, with this part of the process. I would note, you know, um, we get inquiries every day, dozens a week uh, from people who got certified with another organization, and now they come to us because they're looking for help finding a job because their TEFL school, you know, didn't really provide them with the guidance and resources they need. Um, and just really quick on that, like I tested those boundaries, guys. <laughs> like I literally, my goal was to teach on every continent and every year I reached out to get those resources and my advisor always got back to me. So they do really mean it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so some red flags to avoid when you're choosing your TEFL provider as you're shopping. Um, like we said, not all are created equal. There's some you'll see on Groupon. Don't really trust those. Um, but we're going to go over some deeper red flags that you want to look out for to make sure that you are investing your money, your time, your energy into something that's actually going to get you somewhere. All right. You know, and this is going to you're going to see some of these same themes that we've been talking about. So, hey, we said a practicum is really important. You're going to take the best TEFL class and qualify for the best jobs. Watch out for courses that don't have any practicum, uh, you know, especially like self-taught online courses, uh, weekend or other short courses that don't really include 100 hours of coursework. And this can make it tricky because sometimes you'll see 100 hours, uh, 100 hour TEFL course, and then you'll read in, you know, the reviews and some guy will say, hey, I finished this course in one weekend or one week. Well, if you finish the course in a hundred a hundred hour course in one week, it's not really a hundred hours, right? So a uh, hundred hours, that's the equivalent to a full-time four week online class or the equivalent part-time uh, in-person or online class. Um, you know, is the course actually being taught by instructors or is it just an automated online course where you get little to no feedback? 
Um, and again, you know, look out, you know, what, ma make sure that whatever TEFL course you take is being provided by somebody who provides that job search guidance, if that's something that you think you really need. And I think most people going into the, this process feel like, you know, they do to get the job that they really want. So yeah, obviously finances are a big part in making your decision, but really be careful about that too good to be true pricing because you really do get what you pay for. Um, if you're seeing classes that, that always have like a 90% off sale, like, do you trust that? Um, ask yourself, like we were saying, all of our professors here have a university level ed education. We got to pay our professors properly because they do amazing work. So could we pay our professors if we were like doing the course for 200, 500, 800? Like you really are wanting to make sure that you are enrolling yourself in a course and investing your money and your time in something that's really going to help you feel prepared in those situations when you are abroad teaching in a classroom where the students don't speak your language and you don't speak their language. Like I've been there and you really want to make sure your TEFL prepares you for that. Um, also pricing, we have lifelong job search guidance. Like that's something that comes in the tuition. A lot of times you might see like there's job guidance really do ask those questions as to what is included in that, because you want to make sure you actually have a real person you can talk to who's done it, who can answer those questions, not just, you're going to get like a link to a Craigslist basically. So really do watch those prices um, because we do get people every single week coming to us looking for that assistance. And we only have so many resources to be able to help people. So that is something that comes along with our tuition. Yeah. And uh, self-paced classes. So, you know, there may be, there are some, you know, some, maybe some great self-paced classes, but in general, uh, this can be a, a red flag for several reasons. For one thing, a lot of studies show students are less likely to actually complete a self-paced course. You know, it might seem great. Hey, I can just do this whenever I want. Uh, turns out a lot of people really need a structured course with deadlines and with engagement to actually get through the course. Um, also, self-paced classes are a lot less likely to incorporate individualized proper instructor feedback. That's a huge part of our courses. Um, there's very, tends to be very little peer-to-peer -peer interaction and often no practicum. Uh, and they tend just to not meet international standards and don't have proper accreditation. All right, so let's talk about uh, different types of TEFL courses. We're gonna talk specifically about courses that we offer. Um, let's get started. So um, we offer about 25 in-person uh, TEFL courses around the world. These are typically four week full-time TEFL courses, 100 hours of coursework at least six at least six hours of practicum. Most of them have quite a bit more. Uh, again, all of our courses taught by highly credentialed instructors, typically with advanced degrees and extensive experience. Uh, they're all accredited. They typically uh, maintain small class sizes, 12 to 14 students. There's usually, you know, usually two instructors that can vary. Uh, you know, one thing about taking a class, let's say you really want to teach English in Costa Rica, you can go to Costa Rica, take a four week class, and the staff on the ground there will be able to help you set up job interviews, basically right out of the course. Uh, so if you have a specific country that you know you want to teach in, and there's a course offered there, that can be an advantage. A lot of people like being able to acclimate to their new country, meet people, get the lay of the land, uh, that sort of thing. Um, now, if you don't know where you're going, hey, you can still go take a TEFL class in, let's say, Florence or Quito or, uh, you know, Vietnam or what have you, and then find teaching opportunities anywhere in the world because all of our students do receive lifetime job search guidance. Uh, tuition is going to vary. Uh, bear in mind, accommodation, food, housing, uh, 
you know, we can help arrange housing during courses or provide it, but it's typically not included in tuition. So look on our website if you're interested in a four week in person class, see all the details about, you know, uh, tuition and other costs that might be involved. And of course, talk to your advisor as well. So I actually did the in one of the in-person courses here at ITA. Um, it was a great opportunity, but I had the time, I had the finances, I had all of that. A lot of my friends and family who got the certificate here at ITA decided to go with the 11 week online class because it's really flexible. So it really doesn't make it more doable for you to do if you're currently working or studying um, because it is more of a part-time option. So um, the part-time course is 150 hours of coursework, and you're going to get 20 hours of that practicum practice teaching we've been talking about. Um, you will have professional instructors. They're still going to be well-prepared, same instructors with a master's degree or PhD in the area. Um, the certificate's going to be equally accredited internationally, recognized all around the world, Uh we still like to keep small classes. So even if you are doing this online course, it is still a live course. Um, there's only 20 students per class. You really do get to engage with the professor, with your other students. You get feedback throughout the course. So even though it's an online part-time course, you do really get that live small aspect of it. Um, so like I said, working, going to school, you're going to be good to go with this one. It's only about 10 to 12 hours per week. Um, and it is a flexible schedule. So you're going to have live lectures. You're also going to have recorded videos. Uh, your professor has office hours. So even if you can't attend those live lectures, you can always attend those office hours to talk with your professor about your options. Um, we're also super proud because we just won the Go Abroad Award for top rated online TEFL course again for the fourth year in a row. So super exciting stuff going on here. Um, the course quality and the level of instruction really does make it a popular option because we're ready to accommodate people who are working, but you do want to make this your end goal. So you still can do what you're doing, but still be working towards that goal in the long run. Um, the tuition for this course is $1,599. We did just announce a discount going on for $250 off. So it's currently $1,349 until June 30th. Um, and we do have payment plan options available. So if you pay in full, you get an extra 50 bucks off. Um, but if that's not an option for you right now, the payment plan really is flexible. So talk with your instructor to make sure you can set up or sorry, your advisor to make sure that you can set up something realistic to make sure you can get it all planned out and ready to go. Yeah. And as Christy just mentioned, we're super proud that we, you know, we're named again, uh, top online TEFL course, top TEFL course provider by Go Abroad. Also our online TEFL course as listed as a top online TEFL course option by Go Overseas. And then anytime you see a list of sort of top online TEFL courses or top TEFL courses, this course always makes it because it's really considered the, the gold standard uh, in the industry for online TEFL certification. Um, yeah, we don't yeah. have... Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> No, but I was just going to I was gonna say, um, <laughs> yeah, so we definitely want to show you a little bit of the demo about what that online course looks like, since it is our most popular option. Um, we've already gone 40 minutes in, so we don't have time for a full demo. If you do want a full demo, reach out to your advisor because we do have that available. Um, but we are going to give you a couple of slides so you can get a sneak peek about what the course is like and how it runs and all that good stuff. Yeah, so here's just a quick overview of the syllabus or curriculum. Uh, as you can see, it really covers, you know, all the basic skills that you need to run an ESL classroom, everything from, you know, teaching basic skills like listening and reading, how to use visual aids and technology, uh, lesson planning, methods and approaches, cultural sensitivity, 
uh, designing, you know, course design. Uh, there's a big final special project that every student needs to complete. And of course, there's also the live practice teaching aspect. And we'll get into it because I know a lot of you have questions. Well, how do you do that in an online class? So we'll touch on that in a moment. Uh, one thing to note, this online class, 150 hours of coursework, 20 hours of practicum. That means you're covering about 40% more content than a standard uh 120 hour TEFL class, which is sort of what most other classes out there uh, are. So you're covering more content. That means you should be learning more. And also employers will see that you've taken a course with more hours and that will work in your favor when you're actually applying for jobs. One of the things I really liked about that too, um, from my personal experience was that you really get prepared, like well-rounded with this TEFL course. Like John was saying a lot of the courses are less hours and they really just cover your job. What's the role of the teacher, types of students, stuff like that. Um, but the major gold I got out of this course is like that cultural sensitivity in the classroom. What is it like living abroad, teaching abroad? Your professors have that experience and they love sharing it. So it's not just preparing you for your job. It's really preparing you for everything all around the board. Um, so here's a quick little overview about one of those chapters, what it looks like in the platform. Um, you'll get a summary about what the chapter is about. Um, you'll get the objectives, the different things that you are going to be covering. Um, and then each week you'll have tasks. That's one of the really nice things about this course is that while it's asynchronous, um, we do hold you accountable to get assignments done um, every Friday and Sunday. So those are going to look like uh, peer participation. So talking with those 20 other students in your course, um, multiple choice quizzes, and some written assignments um, that you're going to get turned in. You're going to get feedback each week so you can continue improving throughout the course. Yeah, and for each chapter, they're going to be reading assignments. Uh, these typically take uh, an hour or two a week. It's may, gonna, may vary depending on your own personal reading speed, and and the lengths uh, are going to vary from chapter to chapter. Um, our curriculum and our textbook have been specially designed by uh, ITA's own team of TEFL experts uh, to incorporate all of the latest when it comes to ESL teaching methodologies and practices, um, and it's all updated regularly to keep up with the latest developments in the field. So here's a typical example of one of those written assignments we were talking about. Um, it's going to be from that same chapter on cultural sensitivity. Um, you're typically going to have one of these written assignments due every week. Um, they're going to be anywhere from about 500 to 1,000 words, so it's nothing too long and strenuous, um, and your professor is going to go over those to grade each assignment to give you that feedback. Um, you're going to make sure that you can use that feedback on those future assignments so you can keep making progress throughout the course. Um, a lot of the other online TEFL courses, they honestly do automated stuff. So you're not actually getting feedback that's personalized to you. And for me, that was something that was really important because I wanted to make sure that I was going to help my students in the best way that I could. And the best way we can do that is by making mistakes and learning through it. So the feedback really does benefit you um, in that different way. Yeah, and as somebody who looks at all of both the internal course evaluations that we get from our students, but also the external reviews, uh, the personalized feedback from the instructor is something that students always rave about. They say it's something I didn't expect and something in a course like this. This is I never received this much feedback in an online course before. Uh, so it's something that really makes our students feel like, hey, I'm getting the attention I need to really improve my skills as I take this course. Um, here you can see we have a library of recorded video lectures and demonstrations to help you with each chapter and assignments. Um, you know, we have literally, you know, dozens and hundreds of, of different videos. We know a lot of you are, you know, are visual learners uh, again, but, you know, here are just some of the uh, you know, examples that you can see from this one chapter about cultural sensitivity. 
So like we mentioned, you're going to have those live lectures multiple times a week, but you're also going to have those recorded lectures to be able to watch in your own time. Um, these are going to relate to the academic portion of the course, but kind of like I mentioned, they also do cover different areas within TEFL. Um, they cover finding different jobs in parts of the world. They cover preparing for your TEFL job search. Um, my professor actually, one of my favorite sessions was she talked about like the psychology of when you're living abroad. So it's like when I was going through my six months abroad, I was reaching this point, but I already knew what I was doing because my professor had been through it and prepared me for it. So that's kind of more details as to what I was talking about earlier about like you really do get prepared for the full well-rounded experience through our professors with their personal experience as well as the academics. And here's a quick look at a uh, example of a peer-to-peer -peer assignment. Uh, peer-to-peer interaction is a key part of uh, all of our courses, including our online courses. Um, it adds a lot to the course. It's a great way to pick up, pick up extra tips. Um, you know, even though folks haven't necessarily taught, people are still going to have good ideas and experiences of their own to reflect on. Very often you will have, you know, a few folks in your class who are experienced teachers and they, and they're, you know, very willing to share their own perspectives and insights. Um, so it's a really valuable part, uh, of the course. And again, I think this sets up, sets, uh, this course apart from a lot of the other options out there. So another thing we've been talking about is those practicum hours, that practice teaching. Um, so a lot of people ask us like, well, how am I going to actually complete those hours? So one of the nice things with this online part-time course is it is a more flexible option. You have the option of doing that online. You have the option of doing it in person. And I honestly recommend doing whichever you're planning to do. So you can build that confidence through the course. By the time you're done with the course, you know what you're doing. Um, the requirement is just that you're teaching the subject of English to non-native English speakers. So like I said, you're actually going to have real experience, not that awkward like thing with other fellow teachers. So it is really nice getting to start engaging yourself with international students, getting a feel of what it feels like. Um, and once you enroll, you also have an entire practicum packet you're going to see um, that outlines everything in more detail. Um, as well as if we go to the next slide, um, it's you're going to have your online portal that has an entire section just on practicum. So we have practicum requirements. We help you find practicum locations. Uh, we have, like we said, over 48,000 alumni who have done our course, who have done their practicum. We have a list of places they've done it, both online and in person, that you can use those. Um, but as long as you're teaching the subject of English to non-native English speakers, it really does count. Um, but in the platform, it really does give you lots of resources to make sure that you have everything you need to make sure you can get those practicum um, hours completed. All right. Um, so we know the 11 week class is really popular. It's part time. It's great for people who are working or going to school. Um, now, if you're looking to get certified as quickly as possible and uh, you don't have much in the way of time commitments, we do offer a four week intensive online TEFL course. Uh, this course is more structured in that it does run live Monday from fr Friday from basically 930 to around 5, 530 central time in the United States. That's going to vary day to day based on the schedule. In some cases, you may have practicum a little bit later on. In other cases, you may, uh, you know, you may get off a little bit earlier, uh, but it's basically the same curriculum, the same course that we just went over, but in a concentrated format. Uh, there are 12 students per course. I believe there are two, in, two instructors, again, highly qualified instructors. Uh, a great option, again, if you're looking to get TEFL certified quickly from home and you're not working, because uh, this really is a full-time commitment. Uh, tuition for this course, $2,099. There is a $200 discount if you enroll uh, for any future intensive course by the end of this month. 
So those are our different TEFL course options. Uh, you have the four week full time, you have the 11 week part time. Um, I like to think of the TEFL certificate as like your major. We also have these advanced specialty courses. I like to think as your minor. So it really goes into the different niches within TEFL. Like I said, I've had so many different experiences teaching kids, adults, online, tu private tutoring. Um, these specialty courses are really going to help you not only just stand out against the competition, um, they also, we've seen people use them to negotiate their salary and they also just help you feel more confident. Honestly, when I got started 10 years ago, they didn't have these courses at ITA yet, and it would have saved me months, if not years of figuring it out by myself. Um, most of these courses are just a quick two week part-time course, um, other than the English grammar course, because I mean, let's be honest, you can't cover English grammar within four weeks. I think everyone here probably can understand that. Um, but it really is a nice way to be able to focus on those specific areas. So we have Teach English Online. If you're wanting to get started teaching online before you go abroad, in between contracts, while you're abroad, while you're traveling, I've honestly done it in all of those ways. Um, we have teaching English to young learners. If you're planning to go to Asia, most job opportunities are going to be with young learners. You're definitely going to want to look at that one. Um, we have teach business English. If you're looking at doing more of Latin America and Europe, um, if you're a more mature teacher who has business experience, but looking for a new area, this is going to be the course that you want to look at. Um, because there's a lot of people around the world who work in business, but they need to speak English in order to get a job, to get a promotion. I've done a lot of business English within private tutoring um, while teaching abroad, online, all of that. Um, like I mentioned, Foundations of English Grammar, that's really a deep dive into grammar. So as native speakers, a lot of us usually are like, oh, it's just because of this. Um, if you don't feel like you can explain grammar, you're definitely going to want to do that course. Um, one of our new courses is tutoring English. I personally am planning on taking this course myself later this year. Um, I've heard amazing things. Some of my fellow advisors, they've already taken this course. They want to take it again because we've updated it. Um, if you're looking to do more of starting your own private tutoring business, doing more one-to-one, -one, it really does help you set yourself up for that. Um, our newest one is teaching test prep skills. If you're going to be teaching teenagers, adults, um, most of them need to take English exams in order to get into schools, universities, to get jobs. Um, and it really does take a long time to lesson plan these courses. So this course tells you where the resources are, how to set it up, all of that highly recommend. Um, but yeah, like I said, these courses really are a great resume booster. They really help feel, help you feel more prepared as you're job searching within specific niches, depending on where you're teaching, how you want to teach. Um, tuition is typically 349 but if the grammar course is 549 since it is an extra two weeks. Um, but if you do bundle these in with your TEFL course, you can save an extra 75 bucks. So I highly recommend doing that. And if you do want to, you typically do these after your TEFL course. Um, so if you do want to set up a specific payment plan with those specialty courses, just chat with your advisor about that. Yeah. And also talk to your advisor about which courses might be best for where you're looking to teach. So if you're like teaching in, you know, East Asia and someplace like Korea, you're probably working with younger students, in which case you probably want to take the teaching English to young learner uh, course. But talk to your advisor uh, about, you know, your own situation and where you want to teach for sure. But yeah, these are fantastic courses. In fact, the test prep course uh, just won the go abroad uh Innovation and TEFL Award uh, just announced a couple of weeks back. So yeah, these are definitely the real deal. Um, we offer also some cultural orientation courses, both in person and online for some top destinations. Um, you know, they provide insights into history, uh, social etiquette, how do you interact with your colleagues and your you know, your students and your bosses and that sort of thing, adjusting to daily life, 
uh, in-person courses, incorporate some language training. Uh, we don't have too much time to go into detail here, but if you end up going to one of these uh, countries to teach, definitely consider signing up for one of these courses. All right, uh, I know we're running out of time. We still got a couple of things to cover. So uh, Christy, let's quickly uh, review some top tips for choosing your right TEFL course. And then we'll quickly touch on, uh, you know, job guidance before we uh, let folks go here. Perfect, sounds good. Um, so yeah, while you're shopping around and looking at options, these are the things that you definitely want to look for. Um, First of all, make sure you talk to a representative, an advisor of the school that before you enroll. Um, talking with them really gets you, helps you get a bigger picture idea of what you're actually going to get throughout the course, after the course. So highly recommend making sure that you feel comfortable before you invest. Um, I'm huge on reviews. I don't eat at a restaurant if I don't read the reviews. So definitely before you take your course, make sure you're looking at sites like goabroad.com, gooverseas.com, Google. Um, those reviews are going to be key into helping you make that decision. Um, you can save $1,000 or more um, if you get certified online compared to on site. So if you are kind of wanting to do more in person, but you also are looking at a more financially like better way to do it, t studying online has honestly gotten so much better over the years. So that could be a really good way. You could still get that certificate and be able to figure out things financially. Um, if you take an in-person class abroad, like John mentioned, it can be a great way to help you line up a local job um, because you're going to be integrating yourself in that community a little bit earlier on. Um, you also really want to focus on the quality, not low cost. You really do get what you pay for, so you don't want to get burned. I've talked to so many people. Actually, a friend of mine did a TEFL course. It wasn't actually recognized. She It actually took her five years to get accepted into the program she wanted to teach in in Japan. Um, so definitely focus on that quality of certification. Yeah, and remember, uh, you know, consider <clears throat> services and features like job search guidance and an engaged alumni community for support and networking. Uh, hey, if you want to get started with your ITA online class uh, and you need to use a payment plan, talk to your advisor. Uh, remember, look for those international standards. Uh, your TEFL certification does not expire. So if you're, let's say, a senior in college or a junior in college and you know you want to teach English abroad when you graduate, hey, knock out your course now. Um, and then you can set up a job. And when, you know, all your friends are like living in their parents' basement after graduation, wondering what they're going to do, you could have a job in some place like South Korea or Spain. Uh, ITA's part-time online course is, again, great if you're uh, working or going to school. And bottom line, the sooner you get certified, the sooner you can have the adventure of a lifetime teaching English overseas. All right, guys, if you haven't pulled out your pen and paper, your notes on your phone, your laptop, make sure you pull it out now because these are the questions you want to make sure you ask as you're talking to those advisors and representatives of the schools you're looking at. Um, first thing, like I mentioned, when I was doing my shopping, who's teaching the course? What are their credentials? Sometimes you'll see tutor. They don't specify what that is. You want to make sure you know what your teacher, tutor, professor's credentials are to make sure you're getting a good quality. Um, make sure you look at how the school is going to be able to help you get a great teaching job. There's a lot of scams within TEFL. You do not want to get roped into those. So you do want to make sure you have support finding those jobs. Um, and there's also jobs where you might have to pay for them rather than you getting paid. That's what we're here for, to make sure you don't get into one of those situations. Um, Make sure you ask about explaining hiring requirements and procedures for the different countries you're considering. Um, Spain, South Korea, some of our top countries, they do get a little bit tricky in terms of visas and hiring and all of that. We want to make sure that you know what your expectations are for your job search, 
before you get enrolled in the course. So please make sure you're talking with your TEFL school um, to make sure they can support you with that. Um, lastly, one of the major things for me, ask about alumni community. Um, once you enroll, you have access to our entire uh, alumni community. I think I joined like 12 different country groups. We have other groups as well um, that you can join. I actually just got a baby announcement for one of my girlfriends. I met in one of those alumni groups like nine years ago. Um, my best friend's mom still meets up with a friend of hers she met while teaching abroad in those groups. So they really are a great way to network with people about teaching opportunities, uh, housing opportunities, and just making friends with like-minded people. Yeah, definitely engage before you enroll. Um, yeah. yeah. So one question that comes up, how much should a TOEFL course cost? Um, you know, I think we've really stressed throughout the broadcast watch out for courses that are really cheap or courses that, you know, have super duper offers that seem too good to be true. Cause as Christy says, Hey, you get what you pay for in when it comes to TEFL. And when you're looking to move halfway around the world and change your life and go overseas, you want to do it right. And you don't want to get shortchanged. You don't want to be unprepared and you definitely don't want to get into a situation that, uh, you know, isn't what you're looking for because you tried to cut some corners on cost. So, you know, typically you're not going to find a high quality TEFL course for less than, you know, I'd say 13, 14, 1500 dollars. Um, you know, definitely do your research, talk to your advisor, talk to other TEFL courses. Uh, but again, you know, when it comes to doing something this big and this life changing, you definitely want to uh you know, get the best value um, and investing in a high quality TEFL course, you will get that value many times back uh, if you do it right. Really quick on that too, if you have teaching experience or not, like teaching certificates, if you move, you have to get a new one. If like every year, every two years, every five years, you have to get a new one, that's paying for another one. One of the major reasons I decided to go here is because it's for life. It's recognized everywhere. I've been using mine for over 10 years across four different continents. So yeah, you're putting that initial cost down, but also it's for life. Um, it's not going to be a cost that's going to keep adding on top of each other every year, a couple of years. So something to keep in mind. Um, so we talked about like what your opportunities are going to be for after you finish your course. Um, here, we have that job search guidance to help you find your teaching jobs. Um, advisors here really go above and beyond. We have over 48,000 alumni teaching over 80 countries. We collect all that information to provide to our students and alumni. You have an actual person that you can talk to um, about that job search guidance, which is really nice from my experience. Um, I like talking to real people. <laughs> um, and so it is nice knowing like, okay, I'm thinking about teaching here. Once you enroll, you have access to everything we have. We have job search guidance manuals for each country. We have school finders where our alumni have worked, where they prefer hiring our teachers because they had a good experience. They want to have another one. So. Yeah. I mean, and the service is just you know, everything from putting together your resume and your cover letter. And, you know, they're looking for yeah. different things in different countries when it comes to these things. You can't just crank out the same thing you would to apply to your lo you know, local bank for a job. Um, you, you know, you do get that personalized guidance. Uh, there are all kinds of webcasts and recordings and trainings and workshops. Uh, we have a 500 page and counting job search guidance manual, which includes links to hundreds of ESL job boards, contact information for tens of thousands of employers worldwide, all the major government programs, whether it's a JET program in Korea, the EPIC program in, uh, I mean, the EPIC program in Korea, the JET program in Japan, the TAPIF program in France, the NALCAP program in Spain, and on and on, all of those sorts of programs uh, we have expertise and resources to help you apply for. And again, this is assistance for life. So Christy's an embodiment of that. She's, you know, taught <laughs> in multiple countries <laughs> uh, <laughs> online. And uh, our team has always been there to help her, you know, find the next, uh, the next opportunity. So 
I think this is one thing that really does set ITA apart from other TEFL providers. Um, now, this is all included with your tuition. Uh, you don't pay anything extra for this. We do offer some guaranteed job placement programs in Asia, which go above and beyond in terms of the personalized support with everything from uh, you know, helping you get your documents for your visas. Uh, we actually set up the job interviews for you based on what you're looking for in a job. Uh, this program, these programs also include, include 40 hours of cultural and language training uh, and also access to in-country support once you're teaching. So if you do have like, let's say an issue with an employer or, uh, you know, you maybe you're having a little culture shock or homesickness, we have a team there. Uh, to provide that extra support. So we offer these in a variety of Asian countries. We'll be sending out some links with more information and a follow-up email tomorrow. Uh, so keep an eye out for that and also talk to your advisor if you think this is something that you may be interested in. Um, we do have an ebook, so make sure you ask your advisor for the ebook if you want to learn more about that. Um, cause one of the nice things about our recruiters is, is that the recruiters actually work for you. Um, most of the recruiters that you'll find work for the school. So looking for the school's best interest, that's one of the really nice things that we are particular about here is that the recruiters actually do work for you. So they're looking out for you. Yeah, totally. Um, finally, we're finally there just about at the end, but we just wanted to touch on the ITA Alumni Association. So since we started uh, way back when, from day one, we've really made it our mission to build an international community of teachers and travelers. Uh, this manifests itself in many ways, um, you know, from organizing get togethers around the world. Uh, as Christy mentioned, we have, you know, more than a hundred exclusive Facebook groups, many based on country, but also for teaching English online, for folks who are over the age of 40, you know, different demographics or people who have different interests. Uh, and these are a great way to network and ask questions of people, other ITA graduates, just like you, who are teaching in these countries. So if you once you sign up for your TEFL course, you can join, let's say, the Korea Facebook group. You can hop on and, hey, you know, you may want to know, can I get peanut butter in, in South Korea? Somebody <laughs> on the, uh, you know, somebody in the Facebook group will there to to answer your question or, the, you know, very often people you know, find roommates, when, they share job tips. Uh, I mean, Christy, you actually use these things uh, extensively yourself. Yeah, I was going to say, when I first moved abroad, I didn't know anyone. Like, I didn't have a job set up. I talked with my advisor. I had a game plan, but, like, I did not. I just was getting on a plane. Like, <laughs> let's do this. Um, my advisor really did set me up, but the alumni group was amazing for me. I think there was a group of, like, 10 to 15 of us who all met up when we first arrived we met up for drinks, food. We went through the job search together. We went through everything. And like I said, I'm still in touch with them. I just heard from one of them like last week. We talk on the regular. Um, I I actually found housing in one of the groups one time. Um, I know people who have found jobs through this. So it's a really great network personally, professionally, like in so many different ways. Yeah. And we, you know, finally, we love to tell the stories, uh, help our help our alumni tell their stories. So if you want to write an article about your experiences teaching abroad, yes. do a video, do a social media takeover on Instagram or something like that. Uh, you know, we have we, we do this all the time. Um, and those are great resources also to check out on our website when you're doing your own research. Definitely look at those alumni videos and articles. Uh, I could go on and on. Uh, here's actually a, a photo. Our colleague, uh, Ambrosia, who's also an ITA grad down there on the left, um, holding up the flag with a peace sign. She was recently in South Korea and, hey, she got together with a bunch of ITA teaching in the in the Seoul area. So here they are, uh, you know, hanging out at a, at a fake Irish bar or something. But that's just a small example of, uh, you know, the ITA community getting together in action uh, around the world. All right, so bottom line, we're here to help. Classes begin online every two weeks. Most in-person classes begin every month or so. Uh, get in touch, talk to your advisor. Uh, we're here to help. 
Um, yeah. So what are the next, uh, what are the next, uh, steps, Christy? Yeah, so I'm one of those people I like to check off the boxes. So I do like to think of things as like step by step process. Um, so step one is going to be talking to your advisor. If you don't already have an appointment booked, book one, it's a quick 15 to 30 minute call. We love helping you get to know you better, figure out your goals, help you build a game plan, get you in the correct course. Um, so definitely talk with your advisor because that's what we're here for. Um, if you don't know who your advisor is, send us an email because we will make sure we connect you with an advisor. Okay. Um, step two is choosing your TEFL course. No matter where you go, when you go, you're going to need that TEFL certification. So make sure that you choose that correct course. Your advisor can help you decide if you're still unsure. Um, but once you get enrolled, the adventure is real. You're making it happen. Uh, Finally, step three, you're going to start teaching, whether that's abroad, whether that's online. Some people like getting started abroad. Some people like getting started online. Um, it really is up to you. That was one of my favorite things about ITA is that while we we help you get that certification, but we also provide you with that help and expertise in finding that job. So you are going to make something happen. As long as you stick with us, follow the advice of your advisors, you honestly will be good to go through my experience. Yeah. And it's worth noting that once you enroll in your course, and once you've paid up your, your full tuition, you have access to job search guidance. So you yep. can start working on, on your, on your job search while you're still taking, let's say your online class, uh, also, yeah. you can apply and look at opportunities in multiple countries. So you don't need to, it's not like you sign up for China and then that's the only place that we help you find a job. You can look in China at the same time, be looking for opportunities in, you know, Chile or Spain or what have you. So uh, lots of flexibility when it comes to looking at jobs around the world. I know we're way over time that uh, that match between uh, Chile and Argentina is getting started without me. But Mike, were there any <laughs> was, there, was there a big question or two that that came up that maybe we can help address uh, right quickly before letting people go? Yeah, the biggest one I see over and over. It's sort of a a combo, but it's about the part time eleven week online TEFL certification course. Um, sort of a mixture of people asking, um, first of all, they want to make sure that they're getting the same level of qualification they would if they did an in-person course. Uh, cause as we know, 80% or so of our students annually do the part-time course. So if you want to know to make sure it's the same level of training and qualifications they'll need also, uh, as compared to an in-person and then, uh, a little bit about the nature of it being sort of asynchronous. So depending on where you live in the country, uh, is it accessible for you or not even, excuse me, in, in North America, all around the world, is it accessible for people to take the part-time online course? So a two for there. Yeah, I'd say, first of all, you know, we put a lot of effort and time and money <laughs> into building out our online TEFL course to make sure that it met the highest standards of quality, including those met by the highest quality in-person courses. Uh, the online course is recognized um, by Ofqual, which is the British government uh, organization that oversees professional TEFL certifications and all kinds of other professional certifications as the same top level as the highest level four-week TEFL classes like CELTAs and all the other in-person TEFL classes that we do offer. So yes, you're, you know, you're learning the same skills. Uh, as we pointed out, this course incorporates a lot more hours than a lot of those other courses. Um, online education has really gone mainstream. Ivy League universities, yeah. Fortune 500 companies, uh, you know, government organizations like, you know, the State Department and whoever, they all use online training and education. So it's really become mainstream and accepted. The key is, you know, the proof in the pudding when it comes to the actual quality and accreditation of the course. And also, can you actually get a job with it? And we have students who take this class who get jobs in all of the major job markets. Uh, 
around the world. So yes, it's going to get you where you want to go in terms of one, getting the best training, two, getting a recognized certification, and three, getting a job when you're actually looking to teach English abroad. Uh, Christy, you want to address the part about the, uh, you know, how the course works, the scheduling and the timing and so forth? Definitely, definitely. Um, I do want to touch on that too, because like I said, I actually did an in-person course because I was like, I'm a hands-on person. Like I need to do things hands-on. Um, but now looking at how the courses ran in the 11 week part-time online course, um, now that I'm working here and seeing how everything goes, it really feels like a live course. It's still a small group. You still get to engage with the other students. You get to engage with your professor. So it really, you do get that in-person feel, even if it isn't in-person and the practicum hours, you can still do in-person, even if you're doing the online course. So if you just don't have the time or whatever, you can still do that. Um, but in terms of answering the question about um, the asynchronous nature, um, you are going to have those live lectures multiple times a week um, that you can attend. But if you can't because you're in a different time zone or you're working or you're sleeping, whatever, <laughs> no stress, um, you're going to have access to the recording. You're going to have access to the um, entire video library of lectures from your professor and our other professors as well. Um, your professor also has office hours. So you can, if you can attend those lectures, but you watch the recording, do the reading and still have some questions, you can always still talk with your advisor um, or your professor, sorry. And you really do get that feedback to continue improving. So um, if you cannot make those live lectures, do not stress because you really do get the resources you need to make sure you get those assignments in um, on those Fridays and Sundays for that part-time course. So as long as you are completing those assignments on time, um, it's really as flexible of a schedule as you want it to be. Excellent. And again, you got more questions about the online course or anything about TEFL certification or teaching in different countries, talk to your advisor. We do have an ebook with a guide that gives you uh, access to uh, a guest section of the online course where you can look at all of this more in depth. We have loads of reviews and uh, testimonials from and articles from our students who discuss their experience taking that class. So check those out to gain more insights. Uh, in the meantime, Hey, we thank everybody for sticking with us. I know we went a little bit over. Thanks, guys. Uh, apologize for that, but thank you for spending some time with us. We all know you're super busy. Summer's in full swing. There's all kinds of great soccer and football to be watched. Uh, <laughs> Mike, Christy, thanks so much. Tremendous job as always. Have a great evening or a great day wherever you are. Please get in touch. We look forward to hearing you and have a safe and pleasant evening. Take care, everybody. Chat soon, guys. Thanks for joining. Cheers.